Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to some more Heroes of the Storm. Today it is time to play a game with the one and only Tassadar, one of the absolute highest ranking protos and obviously going to be, you know, the guy from the StarCraft universe. He's gonna be a pretty big deal, I think, in the next expansion in Legacy of the Void. But anyways, so today I'm gonna be playing a game with him. He is one of the few characters in Heroes of the Storm that really only has one go-to build. Um, and, you know, with build I obviously mean like a talent selection. Um, and the very first item we are going to be going for is Overload. Now let's say hi to the team. Hi team. Um, with a little bracket right there because we really don't need to. Uh, but our team is going to be Vala, the Butcher, Taranda, um, a Asmodan, and then we got me, the Tassadar. So we have a very damage focused team composition right there. Uh, then the opposing team is going to be Muradin, Murida, Malfurion, Nova, the Butcher, and Kiltha. So they also do have one. And look at all the politeness right here. Already starting off in the game. Very, very nice. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna go over the abilities that I got, I'm gonna go over the different talent selection, and I'm gonna try and play a fun little game right here while we are at it as well, just to showcase you what this guy is all about. So in general, this guy is regarded as a support character. Now, I want to mention right off the bat that he's likely the least support support character there is, because for the most part, he's just a heck of a lot of damage dealer. Let me see actually if Asmodan went for Taste for Blood, he did, uh, so I will let him finish these minions for the most part, if I manage to at all. Uh, with his big ball of fire, so he can uh, start gathering those stacks. We'll try our best to use it together with the storm that we got. Uh, but anyways, so... In general, this guy is a damage dealer first, and a, like a, a support second. I can usually do a lot of shielding, and usually like your shielding is sort of similar to the amount of damage that you do, and you can be quite annoying with it. But for the most part, come on, file ball of fire, dude. Ball of fire it up. Here we go, get those stacks. Um, but for the most part, you're like a mix between a damage dealer and a support. There's not really, you know, one dedicated damage dealer. Um, you know, he's not really a dedicated damage dealer, but definitely not a dedicated support either. So as far as my abilities go, first off, I got a D ability, uh, which is called Oracle. And Oracle is great for spotting cloaked heroes. Now, they do have a Nova on the team, so I'm activating it right now. And basically, you see this big area of vision around my character right now. It does cost me mana, and the cooldown is relatively long. Uh, but I can use it to spot where Nova is located. And I can also use it to, you know, kill creep tumors if there was a Zagara on the opposing team. Or just to, you know, basically be an ass. Now we got the uh, Q ability. Q ability is great for, oh my god, very nice, uh, to shield someone away. So I can activate this on myself. I can use it on buildings. I can use it on everything. But for the most part, you use it to... Um, ensure that, you know, have someone stay alive for a little while longer, or a tower to stay alive for a little while longer. Uh, we're gonna go for the healing ward of talent too, we'll go over why in a second. Uh, then we got my bread and butter ability, that's going to be the W, it's the storm, psionic storm, it's from a high templar in Starcraft 2, you guys will know what it's all about, it does a heck of a lot of damage in a circle, and later on into the game, at level 16 especially, you get a massive damage spike with that ability. So I'm gonna activate the little shield right there on him, you can see it just is very, very nice. Now, <clears throat> the E ability that I got, by the way, it's called Dimensional Shift, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Dimensional Shift. Basically, what that one does, it, it pretty much makes it so that I deal, um, or I can get out of trouble a lot easier. Um, I can activate it, I go invulnerable and invisible for about a second and a half, and it is usually used to, like, you know, force someone to go somewhere else, or, you know, do whatever. So I'm activating my Oracle right here, making sure we have some extra vision, knowing that we, or we now know who is actually coming in, and we saw Muradin almost immediately. A nice little hit right there. Gonna activate my healing ward right here as well. Make sure the team gets a little bit more healing. Actually, could have worked on that position a little bit better, but it's all good. Um, trying to make sure that I do not spam my abilities too much. As you can see, uh, for the most part, this hero does go out of mana very rapidly. Um, so that is the one thing that we have to keep in mind here as well. And that's also one of the main reasons why we picked the healing ward. Um, looks like we should be okay here though. But yeah, there's very little variation as far as talent selection goes on... Uh, this hero, um, simply because the go-to one is, is very powerful and, you know, there's really not many great options around it. So first one, the overload we went for, overload makes it so that the range, all my Q, or all my W ability rather, is a little bit better. We're gonna go over the stack of charge right there. Um, but basically, we picked that one because the other ones aren't that great. You can technically go for the Psy Infusion or whatever, but no, you really shouldn't. You really shouldn't. Uh, then we got the healing ward at level 4. Healing ward mostly because we are running out of mana relatively quickly right here. You can go for promote or something like that as well if you are running like a big team. Uh, but for the most part, healing ward should be your go-to one. Put it down before battle starts in a good position. And make sure, you know, you let your team know or, you know, if you're on Skype or whatever, it's easy to communicate that. 
Um, and then level 7, we went for the Static Charge, basically just making it so that continued attacks after the W ability are a little bit more powerful. Just trying to be an annoying ass right here. Now, one thing to note as well is that, let's say I get caught in one of those things, right, later on into the game. Let's say I see him use his Flame Strike just like that, and I notice, hey, you know, I'm gonna take a lot of damage right now. I can activate my ability, and or my, my Dimensional Shift Rudder, and that way actually get out of it once again, and, you know, prevent a bunch of damage, because you are invulnerable for a little bit. It's very nice. Activate my ability right here as well, check out if Nova is around. Sadly, we do seem to have a bunch of AFKers so far. But it's alright, we're actually about a half level ahead right here, so we're doing okay. Just trying to make sure we stay alive. I should have saved my Oracle for this point in the game. Gonna activate my ability right here. And putting down my healing totem. Just putting down massive amounts of healing, which is very good. And I'm trying to use my Q ability whenever it needs it the most, but so far we haven't really found anything but me that needs it the most. Range on the uh, W ability is already pretty or uh, pretty far forward. Gonna activate the heal right there on Asmodan. Since I do have the dimensional shift available, but oh, we're getting quite kind of low right here. Bolts are always a little bit scary because you don't really know exactly how they're gonna respond in certain scenarios. Okay. Wow, and he actually manages to jump in right here using the dwarf toss. Seems like a very big commitment right here. And he will end up falling because of it. Very good. Gotta keep in mind, I need mana for my uh, for my E ability as well. So, you know, I'm trying to be as, as defensive here as possible, but we did manage to grab it right there. Uh, 26 seconds remaining on the healing ward, or on the on the sippy cup thing. I will I will use it. I will wait a little while longer then and just keep on going. Butcher, butcher, butcher. I'm sorry, butcher. Let me activate my shield for you. And the healing ward as well. He would have died. Alright, I'm just gonna go back, actually. I'm just gonna go back right here. My team is here to soak experience as well. Gotta be water watching out right there in the bottom lane. Because I don't know exactly where they are, but she seems to be fine-ish. Alright, I'm gonna be heading back towards the middle lane right now. Make sure we're good to go. Now, at level 10, we have really only the Archon ability. Um, the Force Wall is good, but no. Like, take, take the Archon. Like, Archon basically puts you in Archon mode. Um, and the Archon is great for, you know, dishing out splash damage for just making your character more powerful and getting in more damage. When you are activating the Archon mode though, and when you are in that, like, phase, I suppose, you want to make sure that you're actually, like, you know, using it, um, like, using as many basic attacks as possible. Like, if you use your, your auto attacks, you're gonna be very powerful. Gonna be going in here. Oh god, Tyrande, 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 no, no, Tyrande, don't run away from the tank. I'm not a tank, but it's okay, you, you get what I mean. Alright, very nice, very, very nice there, there. So I don't really want to activate my ability just yet here. I can, but I don't really want to. We really need to get out of here, because the boss is kind of annoying. Okay. Where are we going, sir? Oh my god, wait, wait, why did you go back? Not ideal, not ideal. I can't activate my Archon, I haven't done so so far. Didn't really feel like there was a good moment for it. Coming in. I will activate my Archon right here if I can, obviously. We'll need a little bit more mana, but we do have enough right now. Especially if there's multiple en enemies around, I will use it. Taronda is back right now. Okay, Archon mode. Archon mode activated. Putting down my healing ward as well. Making sure we dish out the damage. It immediately got taken out because I put it on top of it. Phoenix. Ugh. No, no. Ah, sadly, we do end up falling right there. Didn't have the mana. This is a really bad team fight. Asmodan, I don't think he realized the the t or the uh, the thing he was up. But yeah, just back, just back right now. Just get back to laning. So so far we're doing all right. As we look at the damage right here, obviously we're not gonna have as much as a butcher, right? But we still have like a mix between healing and we have a mix between damage. And in most of the games, you can expect like a 50-50 split. Um, so oftentimes I notice, you know, a little bit more hero damage than shielding. I actually don't have that much shielding in this game so far. Um, but that seems to be, you know, that seems to be kind of normal. So we did end up falling once right there, um, which is totally okay. Now you gotta keep in mind, you can use the shield as well on this. The... Oh, dang it. Not quite there in time. We'll activate it right here. Uh, but you can activate the shielding on the... Um, on, on towers and cores and pretty much everything else. Sort of like Tesla, or sort of like Abathur's, uh, you know, ability to also symbiote buildings. It's exactly like that. 
Activating my Oracle right here, checking out where Nova is. Actually, she's in the mid lane right now, so we should be okay. Uh, next up, we are gonna go for a Shrink Ray. Shrink Ray is also, most of the time, a go-to talent. Um, just because um, there's not very many great options at this one. You can go for Spell Shield if there's like a lot of damage on their team, but I feel like we're okay in this scenario. Okay, activating it right here just to slow him down a bunch. And we do get the kill. Cooldown on it isn't that long, and right now we should be great. Oh my god, please stop him. Please stop him. Ooh, nice. Thank you, Asmodan. Okay, activating my Archon mode right here. And obviously, they do have a bunch of healings themselves as well. So I'm gonna have to get out of here, I'm afraid. Trying to get as many basic attacks in as I can, though. But sadly, the team isn't over here. The team actually does end up falling right here. Don't die, don't die, don't die. Oh my god. Trying to keep him alive right now, to the best of my ability. Very good. We did manage to keep him alive, but they will be able to grab it right now. They actually didn't yet. Okay, very good. We do get a damage spike at 16, like I mentioned. Very, very useful. Oh, dang it. Alright, alright, alright. I don't think we will be able to capture it right here, though, to Nope. I know I gotta believe, but we really need some assistance right here. Trying to move around once again, make sure that I get shield off on Butcher, if I need to. Very good. And I see a, uh, I see a uh, Nova right there. If she gets picked off, that would be huge. Okay, activating my ability actually on her, making sure she goes down. Very, very good fight right there, wow! That turnaround. I'll activate my heal right here as well, so we get some extra healing going for the team right there. But that was a great fight. And we actually got Muradin as well, I don't even know where he came from. Oh hey, we got it. I'm gonna go back real quick, making sure we get mana. That's the one problem that we do have. You can circumvent that by going for the Psy Infusion early on, but... I don't know, I feel like the extra range is a heck of a lot more valuable, especially past 16. Very shortly we will get a massive damage spike. Um, we really need to be careful right there at the top line though. <clears throat> Uh, I'm not sure if you should stick around there, Mr. Uh, Mr. Asmodan. I'm going to mid lane right now. I'm gonna be going for the second strike. So second strike makes it so that I can spawn these things twice. What are the notes? They do not stack. So stacking is not a thing here. Oh god. Oh god! Look out, look out, look out! Oof. Okay. Alright, gotta be real careful here. That is the real one. Activating my heal once again. Using my uh, using my storms and actually storming him mid-jump and getting the kill. Pretty sweet. Okay. I do do a lot of damage at this point, but I won't be able to chase him down far enough, sadly. Adding back. You can't 1v1 him, I'm afraid. Uh, but one, uh, one important thing to note, if you place down your, your storms, you want to make sure you space them out a little bit. Because they don't stack. Like, I will I will not be able to put down a second one on top of that because it's just not worth it. Okay. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Cool. Okay. Gonna have to run out though. Whew. Playing with bots is always kind of scary. But it looks like we got we, we got fine just now. We'll be able to start pushing towards the boss. They will take a little while to clean everything up here. I don't think she will go down, right? Oh my god. Moonfire, a little bit too good. But they will take a bunch of time to uh, to clean everything up here. So I think we should be okay. Pushing the boss, boss forward. So, so far it's looking powerful. So far it's looking good. We will start pushing out a lot more damage very soon. And I'll just activate my healing totem right here actually. Instead of spamming more abilities. Healing totem cooldown isn't that long. I put it slightly in range right there of the boss. If you do stack them, by the way, make sure you like stack them until or like right when that second timer is about to run out, or at least like halfway through. So at least you make some use of the double storm. Uh, the worst thing to do is just to sort of like, you know, storm at the same place twice. Stay together, guys. We can win this. Looking very good so far. No, I don't think we should go there, boss. I don't think that's a good idea. Let's just clean up this thing. Once Vala is here, maybe. Okay. 
Let's go, boys. I'm not the biggest fan of this. And I will use my Oracle in a little bit once they clean up the boss at the top lane. A little bit, a little bit longer. Activating my Oracle. And it looks like Nova is right around the corner here. They are aware of what is going on. But I think we're good. We're good. Very good. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, activating my ability here. Putting down my healing totem here as well. It's trying to dish out massive amounts of damage. Activating my dimensional shift. Getting out of there. As you can see, I used it right there to basically just make sure that we get out of there. I'm very low. Very, very low here. Gonna drink from the fountain. Desi Gaming. We gotta make sure we don't die in the process while taking the tribute, sir. But looks like we got it. And the boss is also still going to town. Very good. Oh god. That is the real one. I don't know if I activated my ability a little bit too soon, dear. Oh, hell no. Oh no! For real? Dang it. Okay, get out of there. I'm gonna have to back. I am gonna have to back here. Very good. So, so far we have a similar amount of damage to Butcher in this game, which is honestly mostly due because of Butcher. And <laughs> Vala actually got called right there. Very unfortunate. Um, but, you know, you can you can notice the damage you can deal at this point in the game is pretty significant. And on top of that, I got about as much healing as a Tyrande. Now, I don't really know what talent selection Tyrande did go for. She did actually take a bunch of the healing talents. And obviously, she also went healing totem, so... Well, she's a bot, so you don't really know. But you, you can notice, like, I can, do, I can do a healing and damage at the same time. This is starting out to be a very good game so far. We need everyone here, though. Their Butcher is out of position. Their Kiltos is out of position as well. I can take you out, sir. You want to make sure you use your second storm if you get it. Okay, we're gonna go in for the Twilight Archon. Twilight Archon basically makes my Archon even more powerful. And I actually messed up right here. Getting way too far out of position. Okay. Fresh meat. Avoid it. With my dimensional shift. Trying to be annoying. Don't kill my Butcher. I gave him a shield. Storm it. Storming again. And he will end up falling. Very nice. We also grabbed the Tribute at this point in the game. Very good. Very, very good. Let's start pushing forward then, right? Okay. Looking very nice. And we will be able to even start hitting Core, I think. Okay. Let's go. Let's go, guys. We got 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Activating my ability here. And we have plenty of time. So, I will leave the build that I used in this video down below the like button. Uh, so you can give it a try as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe. And other than that, I want to thank you guys all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!